All right, so I'm going to address some common user comments and questions in this video, specifically about moving into a rural environment. Is it cost effective? How much does it cost? How much land should I get? Yada, yada, yada. Um, I'll go ahead and say, go ahead and do it. Okay, go ahead and get ready because a lot of these concerns, I mean, they're only concerns because you don't know what's going on. You don't know exactly how it's going to be. They will, they are concerns that will quickly dissolve once you go out and do it. Okay, but anyway, this is something I've done moving into the countries in the, in the country in the past couple of years. So I will give you my experience. Anyway, I'm going to read a comment. This is from Timothy. Can you do a video on how much land you need for certain things? Gardens, farm animals, shooting range, etc. My brother and I, suburban families, are starting to look at land, but don't know diddly squat about it. Currently looking for a square mile for our families and some ex uh, extended families to get and live on, but we know we don't need that much. Yeah, a square mile. That is, a square mile is like a small town. That is a huge plot of land. That's like, that's like 640 acres. That's an insanely huge amount of land. You, you do not need that much unless you are... You have money and you're looking to make a intergenerational inheritance for your family, which is a totally valid thing to do, especially if you have a lot of money uh, or if you're working with other people, that might be something you m might want to do. But that is more land that you will need for a normal family. So um, how much do you need if you're just a family looking to move into a rural environment? Well, how much I have is five acres, okay? And that is not just plenty enough for me. That would be plenty enough for me. I mean, that's enough to support a small family or maybe even a big family. Um, you know, you guys might know Varg Vickerness. He, he and his wife live in rural France. They have like eight kids. They live on like three and a half acres. They grow all of their own vegetables and, and uh, you know, tubers and, you know, potatoes and stuff like that, right? Um, so you don't really need that much acreage to support a family, just a couple acres. Um, even if you want to have like, you know, my five acres would be enough to keep a couple cows, uh, probably. Um, or, you know, chickens or chickens you can keep in your backyard. You, you don't, you don't even need an acre for that. You might need, you know, a quarter of an acre, right? So, um, the land requirements for moving out there, uh, moving out in the middle of nowhere, they're actually pretty low. Although you, the land is so cheap, right? Usually the thing that's most expensive on most of these places is like the house, you know, paying for extra acreage usually isn't that much. And I definitely recommend you get, I mean, when I was looking, I was looking basically minimum of five acres, okay? And I got one that was exactly five acres that has, you know, you guys might know my house. I got grape vines. I got low quat trees. I got pear trees. got uh, fig trees. I got, I got a lot of stuff, okay? I got lucky. Um, but, you know, most of, the, most of the places you're going to find, they're just, you know, normal five acres, might have a clearing, might have a house on it, right? But that is definitely enough for a single family. Um, but uh, now my recommendation, I'm going to go ahead, well, actually, I'll go ahead and read, uh, the next email, because I think it's sort of related to this. This is from Michael. Um, I enjoy watching your rants, especially the ones where your property is visible. Since I'm interested in the self-sufficiency meme, meme, I've decided to work towards getting my own plot of land. I've come to wonder how much land do you own? It seems huge. What are some of the pitfalls you've experienced? Is it just like Minecraft? Kind regards from the Netherlands, Michael. Um, so the land you usually see me walking around at, like the land I'm on now, this is not actually part of my property. Um, and uh, really, I have my five acres. And then around that five acres, I have a lot of neighbors and family members that, you know, I basically just go on walks there, you know, and they have, you know, hundreds of acres combined. Like it's a huge, uh, I guess it goes all the way out here um, to where I am now. So, um, yeah, and some of that land... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically not used by anyone. Uh, a lot of what you do out here with a lot of unused land, you might notice that there are a bunch of pine trees in my video that are like symmetrically planted all in a row. Um, that's because there are a bunch of pine farms out here. If you have like a couple hundred acres of land, you can actually rent it out to a company and they will come on, not really rent it out, but you'll get, you can sell the rights for a company to come grow pine they will grow, you know, pine trees. They will harvest everything. They harvest the straw. They sell it. Harvest the wood. They sell it, and you basically get paid. It's basically passive income. A lot of people around here do that. Uh, basically, everyone who has land. Um, but I will say, you know, my recommendation is, um, well, he, he, if you're just moving to the country, I would not be looking for plots of land that are like a hundred acres or something like that. Start small. And the reason I say start small is, um, you until you are out there, until you are actually in the place that you're going to be. You're not going to know the specifics. You're not going to know every little detail that you need to know to get the perfect piece of land. So my recommendation is get a small plot and um, live there for a little bit, pay that off, and plan to eventually sell that. That's sort of what I think about at the place I live now. Um, I, I might actually keep on to that for, for different reasons, but um, 
you know, that I recommend, you know, especially if you're trying to live debt free or you don't have that much money. Listen, it is not difficult um, if you want to live debt free in the country. Like what you can do, you can just buy a couple, uh, you can get a couple acres for, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, something like that, maybe less. Um, and you can set up a, a kind of a, a, well, nowadays people like to call them tiny homes, but, you know, like a mobile home kind of thing. You know, there's this like classist kind of uh, dismissal of like mobile homes or something like that. But the fact of the matter is you can get them pretty cheap or you can get a tiny home if you want to call it that. And you can set that up. I mean, like for $50,000, you could be set set for life, quote unquote. And I don't mean that, in that you're going to be there for the rest of your life, but you don't, you're not in any debt. You're not worrying about anything. Everything's paid off. You just got to pay your bills, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks a month and then groceries and, you know, you, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, so that sort of brings up the other question that a lot of people ask uh, about like, oh, what about getting jobs and stuff like that? Actually, I have another email on that. Let me go ahead and when oh, I will say this, um, this guy, Michael, actually talked, uh, I guess he mentioned, is it hard to um, uh, are there any pitfalls to it? Or I guess, is it hard to maintain uh, land. And I will say that depends on your land. If you buy a bunch of open space, you might feel obliged, especially if, you know, there's a road nearby, you might feel obliged to like mow it all the time. Um, but you know, if you, if you get, you know, forests or something like that, you can basically let it be. And stuff. anyway, last email, this is mostly about jobs. I'm, it's a longer email. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I was wondering if you, uh, this is from Samuel, I was wondering if you might ever make a video about supporting yourself from cities. I'm guessing you don't want to share your workplace for privacy reasons, but I'm sure you're no longer working in an academic cesspool. Does the supremely low cost of living make up for the fact that uh, you likely have to work at a demand uh, dead end job? Uh, what if the only good company in town goes out of business? Okay, uh, well, I'll, actually I'll keep reading this. Obviously neat is better than wagey, but I don't know how people actually become neats. Parental cash infusions. I do have an entrepreneurial side, but I could also carry. Uh, but I also have lots of anxiety, so never really made anything out of it. I think I could start my own SAAS or other web-based uh, silliness, but it uh, feels incredibly unsure. Uh, okay, so yeah, I, a lot of people will be like, "Oh no, well, if I move to the country, you know, uh, maybe it'll cost less, but I won't have my my wage cut job or something like that." Um, for me, that's never been an issue because, like. Uh, like if if I'm giving given like financial security, or, or if I'm if I'm given freedom versus money, I'm gonna choose freedom. Uh, if I was making like a million dollars a year in a city, I don't know how happy I would actually be with that. Um, so I moved out here, and what you know, one of the move, reasons that I, I guess I originally I could build up the confidence to move out here is I, well, well, okay, at least I could maybe make some money from YouTube or something if I couldn't find a job. Now, as it happened, what happens when I moved down here, I got a job immediately, um, and I, I worked there for a year, got tired of it, um, and now I, I don't know, I just make money online, made a bunch of money on Chainlink. <laughs> um, like, it's not, I don't know, it's just not an issue. I, I guess, like, when you're in your lower 20s, I guess, um, there's this mentality that people have, especially, you know, guys are like, oh, I got to work in the system to, to do well. Uh, where now, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really worried about having money or not having money. I have enough to live. Like once you're in that, again, once, even if you're like that person who's paid $50,000 and got a trailer park on an acre of land, like you're not indebted to the system. Like you don't have to do anything. You just have to buy food for yourself. Like, you know, you could work a week. You, know, you could work a wage cut job like a week, a month, and that would be basically it. So it totally, totally changes your perspective on things. Um, and, and, you know, that kind of question, like the thing you also have to remember is people have been moving into the countries for a country for a while. Um, and now that we live in this era of the Internet, it is it has become easier and easier to make money online. I think a lot of you guys who watch my channel who know uh, software and stuff like that, and you know, I don't know how to use Linux and be able to do systems administration like there's so many uh like we live in a perfect environment for you to move into the country because not just you can work remotely but you know after this corona stuff there are a lot of jobs that are just remote like that's just how it is um so you have less and less of an excuse i mean again the only thing like it's just the once you before you take the plunge like it, of course it's going to look scary um but after you do it you're like okay well this is fine um, so I, I would put yourself in the position of, you know, um, may, you know, I, I was in the position of, okay, I don't need a job when I move out into the country. It would be nice if I had one, but I don't really need it. And I think you should try and make yourself in, put yourself in that position.
um, uh, because I, I know that's hard. I, I'm basically just saying, oh, well, just deal with it. Um, but in reality, it's really, it's really a psychological barrier. I guarantee, like, people in the country, guess what? They make money. And in fact, if you have education, formal education or something like that, a lot, you know, if I were to work at one of the community colleges around here, no one has a PhD at these places. Like, you basically need a bachelor's degree to teach at them or, or something like that. Um, so it's, a, the, I don't want to say the standards are lower. There's just, like, less hoops you have to jump through. Um, and... You know, it may, if you make something like $20,000 out here a year, that is more than most people. That's more than you need. I mean, that's arguably more than like a full family needs. Um, you could definitely make it happen. Um, and when you live in the country, it's not just that things cost less. It's that it changes your spending habits. I, I talked about this in a, a couple of videos ago that I started to buy local. But I mean, even the things that you buy, like are always like when you live in, apart, in an apartment in a city, you know, you're not going to get a bunch of power tools so you can make your own stuff. You don't have enough room for them, okay? If you move to another apartment, you got to move all that junk. You don't have space, okay? But if you have a couple acres, even like one acre, no, excuse me, um, in the country, you have a lot of room. You can do a lot of things with it. And the things that you buy are going to be things that last longer because you can store them. You can use them later on. It's just, you know, it, when you go to the store, um, you think more about what you're actually buying because you can't, it's, you know, you can't just drop by the store like after work and it takes two minutes. You have to like drive out to it around here. Um, so you definitely think more. You, you think more long term. OK, so um, I definitely if you guys are, you know, if you if you're sitting on money right now and you're thinking about doing it, go ahead and do it. If you're a wage cook, um, if you're working like a dead end job in the city and, you know, you might want to. Um, uh, well, I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's really the psychological barrier because I guarantee you, you can go to one of these small towns and go to church and someone will give you a job there. Uh, like, I don't know. That, it's just how it, just give them a firm handshake. Literally. That's often how it works around here. Um, it's, it's like moving into the past, I guess. Um, uh, but, um, if you, if you want to experiment, of course, you know, I did some experimentation before I actually moved out here. Um, not just at the place that I, um, you know, the, the place I live now is... I live around family members and stuff, but additionally, you know, I thought about moving to Tennessee. I did some videos on that a couple years ago, um, and I just went out for a week or so, uh, stayed at some Airbnbs, went to some places, I don't know, churches and the college and, you know, just looked around at the environment and stuff like that. Um, so I reckon, you know, if you're, if you don't know what to do, just take take a weekend off, go somewhere into the country, just live around there, do everything you can. Uh, go to any social events, go to any churches, like just do everything, like just get a, get a feel for it. Because once you break that psychological boundary, it's not going to be a big issue. Um, even if, you know, you're going to be making less money. And um, uh, I don't know, things are just getting, I don't know, it, it's just less and less desirable. Like the, the thing is a lot of people, here's what a lot of people think. They think, oh, if I'm living in the city and I'm making, let's say I'm making six figures at my job, well, if I move to the country, I'm going to be making less, way less. In fact, I should stay on one more year at my company just so I can make a little more money, just so I can, you know, make it easier for that transition. But the thing is, the more you work in the system, sometimes um, you just get more ensconced in it. You, there are more reasons you get, to, you, you can't leave. You know what I mean? Uh, that was the way I felt. Like, uh, my only regret is uh, not leaving earlier, um, even though, like, I got higher up the rang and you know, education and academia and stuff like that. What a, what a, what a waste. Like, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, um, I, I don't know. Like, it, again, it's like a, a, a battle between your personal freedom and quote unquote money. And money doesn't mean that much if you don't have your personal freedom, frankly. Uh, so yeah, that's why I did it. And that's why you should do it too. One, one final note. Um, I know that the last guy asked about, you know, oh, what if I go into the country and I get a quote dead end job? There are no dead-end jobs in the country. Yeah, you might uh, wage cuck for a little bit, but the percentage of dead-end jobs are, like, so much less than there are in the city. And uh, that's a good thing. L l okay, let me put it this way. Um, I've thought about started my starting my own business out here. And, you know, in order to do that, I got to buy, um, you know, got to buy, you know, a physical location maybe and stuff like that. And I looked into prices. Like, I, uh, there's this building I was thinking about buying. I looked into its price. It was $30,000. That was it, like $30,000. This is like cheaper than a house, you know? Um, it's easier to be entrepreneurial out here. If you're, dude, if you, if you watch my channel and you know how to use computers, just go out, go 
you know, paste posters. Oh, I'll fix your computer. Uh, here's, uh, here's my prices. Here's what I do. Okay, great. You, you have some minor income, stuff like that. People out here, they don't know how to use computers. Well, people nowhere know how to use computers, but um, you just got to think about, you know, when you think of rural people, when you meet these people, there are, I mean, we can, we can make fun of urban bug men all we want, but um, there are many skills that rural people do not have just because they don't have, you know, the big money. They don't have like big technology, stuff like that. So all of you guys who are watching my channel, there's, so, there's something entrepreneurial you can do. A lot of these guys have this idea that like it's their job to be a wage cuck. Like they need to find a place where they can fit as a worker. No, you don't need that. You can easily do your own thing. Like it's not difficult. I mean, or if you, hey, if you got rich on Chainlink, no problem.